What if I told you there was actually a systematic way to evaluate and choose the perfect SREF code for a project? And more importantly, how to dial in that exact look to complete your project faster to get better results and of course make your clients happier. Would you be interested in that? I think you are and I wanna show you a three-step way that you can do that. So step one, of course, is finding SREF codes. Now, I like to SREF code mine. I'm always doing that. This video isn't going to be about that, um, but I wanna show you how I keep track of these things. So I have a simple spreadsheet and on this spreadsheet, I've got three columns. I keep track of the codes right here in column A. And of course I've got them sorted by uh, number, right? And then I've got next to it, what it does. Just a couple words gives you some good uh, uh, description about what that number does. And then I have an evaluation. This is not very scientific. It's my gut feeling about how much I like it, okay? And this is on a scale of one to 10. And frankly, you've gotta be at least a five to get on the spreadsheet. But uh, the ones that I really like, I give tens, okay? And uh, I tend to use them a lot. And in, as you can see, I have a, a lot of these SREF codes. This is frankly a lot of work. Um, I didn't do this all at once. This was all uh, done uh, since they started using SREF codes. I've been keeping track of these things because unless you're some kind of crazy Rand man number savant, you can't remember these things. So it's just a really nice handy way of finding a place to put them and, and a spreadsheet's a great way for that. So that's step one. So you know, on this video, we're gonna be creating a fake project. This could be any project. This could be something that you're doing. It could be an illustration, it could be a logo, it could be, uh, it doesn't matter, right? I'm gonna do a, a wallpaper pattern. That's just what I've chosen, but it could be really anything, okay? And uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna find four SREF codes to evaluate. Now, I've highlighted these in yellow just so I could show them on this video easier. So here's the first one, which is a lino cut style, okay? The next one is a wood cut look. The next one is a fine pen drawing. And then the last one here, is just the, the crazy curveball, which is a glossy plastic one. Now, I know this one might not work, but sometimes that's the fun part. And when you're doing this, it doesn't really cost you a whole lot. Actually, it's kind of free. So let's just try something weird out just to see, hey, what do we get? You know, that's how you learn. Okay, so I've got an SREF code already ready. So let's go to Mid Journey. I'm gonna paste it in. Before I launch this thing, here's our prompt, which is just easy. Wallpaper pattern, iris and lily, clean line work, analogous hues, which means they're all next to each other on the color wheel. Tile, remember we're doing a pattern, so dash dash tile means it'll create a pattern that's seamless. That's a really great thing in Mid Journey. And then here are our four SREF codes that I, I mentioned earlier. So just hit return. And here are our results, right? So this is the plastic one, uh, which kind of modern, avant-garde, kind of a different look, right? And I don't know if I like it or not, but it certainly looks different. So if you're trying to create a different pattern, sometimes testing the weird oddball stuff, this is kind of pretty cool, right? Could you see this as a pattern for wallpaper? I don't know, but that might be a really interesting pillow. <laughs> All right, uh, the next is this classic line drawing look, okay? And uh, that one's really nice. Then again, this is what I like about the tile parameter is you can see like the edge right here, this blue, that's for this part of the flower. And then look at this gold flower here. That, this is the bottom of that flower there. So you can see this, you know, morphed out into a pattern. You know, that's how it would work. Uh, that one's okay. But look at this. Oh, I like that one a lot. That's gotta be my favorite so far, right? This is the uh, the lino cut look, right? And then here is the, uh, the wood block, right? Pretty cool. So 
if this was your project, which of these four would you have selected? Are you do you like the uh, the the woodblock look? Do you like the lino cut look? The classic pen and ink look, or the modern avant garde plastic look? Right. I think I'm going to choose this look. Right. This has got to be my favorite of all four of these. Now. The third part of the system is actually testing these and developing this with very subtle, very strong, uh, actually rerunning this a couple times. This is how you could get some better images because now you kind of know what it's going to be like. And we're also going to play with this with some style weights to see what else it could do. Okay. So I'm going to hit very subtle, very strong, just to see what we get with that, right? And then the next thing that I want to do is I want to just get this prompt and I want to dial in the style weight of this SREF code. Now, if you haven't played with this before, the style weight is like the volume knob for the SREF code, right? And just like before, we can use the power permutations and we can dial this in with how much of the SREF code to use. Now the range here is from zero to a thousand. And when you don't put anything like we have right here, the default is a hundred. That's just the level it's at, right? So if we want less of that SREF code, sometimes it's fun just to see what 30, 60, and maybe 80 will do. We already know what a hundred is. So let's do uh, 300, 600, and a thousand. Okay, now this is going to give us a whole bunch of different variations uh, and of the same thing. And we'll see, just see what it does, right? And this is how you can test and evaluate. So here are two variations. This is very uh, subtle and you can see it's just slightly different each one. And here's very strong where they're all completely different. Now here is our style weight of 30. Look, it doesn't really have that many lines and it's more of a playing around with some color. Look at this, this is great. See how I made this little pattern in the background? I love that, I love that. This is all at the 30 level, okay? Let's do a very uh, subtle, very strong on that. All right, here's at the 60 level. These are nice, look at, check this one out. And this is at 80. I'm digging this little pattern in between, behind it. You know, I wasn't doing that before. Now let's look at 300. Look how the outlines and the pattern, uh, the bold black lines have gotten fatter. That one's really cool. So this is 600. And here is a thousand. Nice. So when you're working your way through these and you're evaluating which one to use, one of the things I like to do is just right click and open image in new tab and you find something you like, just kind of throw it up there. And then what happens is you can evaluate and I'll have four or five of these up there and it's kind of like king of the hill. The ones that I like I keep and the ones that I don't I delete and then all of a sudden I've got, I've got exactly what I want. All right, so we got five selections. You, of course, probably submit all of these to your client, but which one of these would you go with? You know, here's my top choice. I really like the pattern. It's got some really funky kind of uh, textures in here. I like the, the line weights. I like everything about it. And I think this is the one that I would submit. Hey, anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. This is how you can take a couple ideas with some SREF codes and work through the project all the way through to conclusion and pick a winner just by playing around and doing some different things. Okay. So uh, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the video channel. But also, if you want to learn more about how to use Midjourney, please, please, please consider subscribing to the 
mid-journey experience school community. We've got a learning community of a bunch of folks just like you learning how to use mid-journey. And that also comes with a weekly newsletter. So uh, anyway, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll check you guys later. See ya.